This is QTV News. I am Maria Tusidibe and thanks for joining us. Coming up, another member of ex-president Jamet's hit squad, The Junglers, gave evidence at the TRRC regime sittings following a fortnight's break. The Justice Minister has moved quickly to clarify reports that three members of ex-president Jamet's hit squad, commonly called The Junglers, have been released. Woven fabrics have been a part of most cultures in the Senegambia region. However, it seems the craft is in danger of dying as people turn to other, mainly imported fabrics. For more on this and other stories, stay tuned. Ismail Jame, a former member of ex-president Jame's hit squad, The Junglers, on Monday admitted to participating in the killing of then AFPRC strongman Almamo Mane, the torture and killing of some of the alleged 2006 foil coup plotters. QTV's Ansumane Isonyasi reports. Mr. Jame, let me, let me tell you, uh, I I just, just hear me out. Now, a few seconds ago, you said... I witnessed that of Savi. Yes. But a few minutes ago, you told us you were never there. What I'm saying is, that of Savi, I'm there now. So now you are saying that of Savi, you are there. Yes. Following a two weeks recess, the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission on Monday commenced its public hearings on the seventh session, again focusing mainly on the activities of the former president's hit squad commonly known as the junglers. In a testimony characterized by hesitation and peppered with controversy, Ismail Jame, a former jungler, on Monday admitted to participating in several killings and tortures, including the killing of former close associate of ex-president Jame, Almamu Mane, and the torture and killing of detainees arrested in the aftermath of the March 2006 foil coup. In his testimony, the witness alleged the killing of Almamu Mane was not intentional as they had planned to arrest him, but he was armed and resisted arrest, and so he was gone down in an attempt to save their own lives. But do you think it really made That's sense? Initiative and common sense. The commander will tell you about the Answer the question. There. Answer the question. Did it really make sense yes. that he would be open who would open fire at people who were out there? And the more immediate trust is right there next to him. But somebody who, who is insult and insists what will you want us to do. We, he opened fire to us, wanted to kill us. The moment they ran to us, I, I am putting it to you yes. that this whole plan yes. was to take Almamo out of the public view and execute him. Yes. And that is exactly what you did. For me, I'm a junior man. I'm not there for, for that decision. Because what we can tell you, we are there. But you participated in that execution. Yes, I participated. But we opened fire. Who trusts him? Nobody knows. Furthermore, the witness also admitted to participating in the killing of former NIA boss Daba Marena and other detainees arrested in connection with the 2006 foil coup. But you knew that these guys were going to be killed. Even if I knew, if I knew, I cannot do anything about it. I am not asking you what you I did. I didn't, I'm not, Just I'm, listen. Yes. I'm not asking you what you did. I'm not asking whether you could do anything at the time. What I am saying to you is at this time, honestly yes. and genuinely inside you, yes. you knew these people were going to be killed. I feel sorry of them. Because, because the they, treated, they put the yes. nylon bag in their You head. felt sorry for them yes. because you knew they were going to die. First, I know. I never know that that will happen like that. The witness also admitted to participating in several tortures while admitting some allegations of having participated in several killings and tortures. He will, however, be remembered as a hostile witness. And Sumana Isonyasi for QTV News. The Ministry of Justice has today conducted a press conference to shed light on its recommendation for the release of three of the junglers who have testified before the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission. The Minister of Justice says the basis of their decision is to encourage truth gathering at the TRRC. The conference came in the wake of public outcry over the Ministry's recommendation last week for the release of three junglers. Momodula Minchoy was there and he now reports. 
after three junglers appeared before the TRRC and admitted to killing several Gambians and non-Gambians, the Ministry of Justice has recommended their release. The decision has not been welcomed by victims' families and members of the public. The Minister of Justice, Abubakar Tambadu, says their decision is not an amnesty for the junglers, as has been speculated by some members of the public. He said that instead, the objective of recommending for the release of the self-confessed perpetrators is to encourage truth-telling before the TRRC. Let us just pause for a moment and think about this. Without the revelations by these three men, we probably would never have established the facts about which they testified on a first-hand account basis. We would have continued to rely on second-hand or even third-hand accounts. These three men have so far provided us with the most chilling details about several incidents under former President Jami. They were encouraged to assist this country, particularly the victims' families, find answers that have eluded all of us for many years, and they voluntarily did so. There are others still in detention who are refusing to assist us establish the truth. And it will be unwise to treat those who have assisted us the same way. The Justice Minister expressed that his ministry is putting the three junglers, namely Malik Jata, Omar Jalo, and Amadou Baji, under the same conditions other self-confessed perpetrators are enjoying after their testimonies before the Truth Commission. He called on the general public and also victims and their families to understand that the ministry's goal is to serve the long-term best interests of the public. The cooperation of these three men has been very critical to the TRRC process and this should be recognized. What we must not do is to scare people away from telling the truth because that will not be in anyone's interest. There are still many truths out there that need to be told. The released junglers have been held in custody for over two and a half years. Tambadu also said that while three have confessed to killings and tortures, others are refusing to speak before the TRRC. According to media commentators, there are suggestions from some members of the public that releasing the self-confessed perpetrators of such heinous crimes is a denial of justice. Others also believe that three junglers to be released might face threats or harm from an angry public. Tambado says anyone who takes the law into their own hands will face justice. Again, I will urge everyone to exercise restraint. I understand the emotions and the feelings that are running high. But without the cooperation of these three, again, as I said, we would not have been in a position to establish the facts that they have shared with us. They are assisting us, and so I want everyone to bear that in mind and to exercise restraint. There are six junglers still in custody, and some more are expected to testify before the commission. Abu Bakr is calling on some other junglers who are now in exile to return home and help the Gambia in its search for truth and reconciliation. Mumon Lamin Chaiku, TV News. A lack of interest in ancient and traditional woven fabrics used by people of all ethnic groups in the Gambia appears to be leading to its decline. Mam Jara Sise tells us more. Traditionally, woven fabrics are the result of techniques used in weaving two or more different threads to form cloths. Woven cloths, also known as Darafano by Mandinkas, Lepi by Fulas, Kirinirame by Sarahule, Blank baka nyingati by Munjagos, kafla kalirum by Jolas, ipai by cereal, and rabal by Wolofs are used to cover a bride's newly born babies before they are named. It is used by Munjagos to cover a corpse before burial. There is a strong belief by many that it protects people from evil, especially young children who are newly circumcised, and babies who are carried at their mother's backs. Tala Juv, a weaver, highlighted the benefits of woven fabrics, saying that it is our culture and that it is used by all ethnic groups because it has powers that prevent people from evil and many more uses. Mahmoud Anfai, who has been weaving for 40 years, urged the government to look after them because they are doing a job that needs assistance. <laughs> 
This is a job that we can do and it is a work that needs assistance because of the threads that we use. Having the threads that we need means we can create different styles because the benefit of a woven cloth is uncountable and the most important thing among all is that it protects us from evils and that's why wrestlers use it all the time. Jaina Baja, a museum assistant, urges youths to look back to the traditional cloth because it is what we have as Africans and it is unique in the sense that it is made by hand and it is sewn as clothes by lots of people. Nyanya Jain, a fashion designer who has worked with many weavers in the country, explains more about the reality of woven fabrics in our societies. I like hand woven fabrics because they are very traditional. And they are one of the oldest surviving crafts in the world, woven fabrics, because they are made out of hands and made out of thread. Um, it's a primary method of textile production, which involves interlocking of um, a set of vertical and horizontal uh, threads um, to make a woven fabric. And uh, as I say, woven fabrics are the only fabrics we Gambians can claim to own. Because if you look at our different traditional or tribes, each tribe in the Gambia has a fabric associated with the tribe. We have the Nyago, we have the Serir, we have the Pular, and we have the Mandinkos, the Sarahules, and these are all handmade. If you look at a bride, you can actually tell a bride just because of the traditional fabric they're wearing, which is Sir. The wax we use are consumed, they're actually foreign. They're brought in, but woven a handmade. They are authentic Gambian. She further urges you to be skillful and look back to our tradition because it is part of what we have as Gambians. And we are the only one who can bring awareness to the young people that woven fabrics can be worn anywhere, absolutely anywhere. I've said this over and over again, skills. We are in a world of skills. I've got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, but I've decided that I learn skills. Skills will take you anywhere. You will survive anywhere we go. Let us not associate skills into poverty. As far back 5,000 before Christ BC, using two or more different threads to form clothes, praying mats, bags, and many more, is respected and valued by elders across all ethnic groups because it protects people, especially young children, from evil and many more. Reporting for QTV News, I am Mam Yara ACC. We will go with a short commercial break and the news continues when we return. Light. From the beginning of time, light has been there. It is integral to our survival and to our way of living. We need light to work. To build. To grow things and even to see our loved ones. Light makes things easier and better. So QCell has changed the way you buy QPower to make it easier and more accessible. You can now access the same service quickly and get your cash power tokens instantly with the new QCell QPower code. To light up your world, simply dial star 363 hash. With the touch of your fingers. With ease and convenience from the comfort of your home or office. You can bring light into your world instantly with star 363 hash. Q Power, lighting your world. Q Cell Sunyabus. We, we innovate, innovate others, others follow. follow. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is QTV News. Collar nuts are very common in the Gambia. They play an important role in different cultures and traditions within our country. The nuts are chewed and valued by some for its health benefits. Dinova Sonko tells us more about its benefits and some health objection. The nut comes from the evergreen collar nut, which is found in Africa's rainforests. Inside the nut's star-shaped fruits are white shells, which contain the seed or call nut. The nuts vary in color from pink to beige. They are bitter but get sweet as they are chewed. Color nuts play an essential part in certain special occasions in the Gambia, such as naming ceremonies, weddings, funerals, and asking for someone's forgiveness. The nuts are also commonly used as gifts to show respect. It is a tradition in the Gambia. 
the first thing given to a visiting president are collar nuts presented by a child. Momo Duba has been selling collar nuts for the past 15 years. The most important role of collar nut is reconciliation when individuals have conflicts. The Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission used collar nuts on billboards across the country to symbolize the act of asking for forgiveness. According to the publication Medical News Today, collar nuts have pharmacological effects such as metabolism boost, stopping the growth of harmful bacteria. However, collar nuts and products containing cola nuts may not suit everyone. Wow, they got a man guru. Why guru mom amut benajeri? I used to chew cola nut, but later realized that it spoils one's state, causes constipation and more. I decided to shift to bitter cola because I have seen more health benefits from that, which includes improved appetite, metabolism boost, amongst others. Mamoduba talks about the challenges faced by cola nut sellers. When the rainy season ends, cola nuts becomes expensive and people complain. Storage is also a little bit critical. It seems bitter cola is being more frequently consumed by many than the cola nut due to the health benefits the former is perceived to have. Cola nuts, however, are more usually used now in traditional rituals rather than consumption. Reporting for QTV News, I am Jenna Basonko. In sports, the 2019 GT Bank sponsored Principals Cup for Schools ended in spectacular fashion at the Independence Stadium on Sunday evening. Two finals were played with Botrop Senior denying Gambia High the privilege of defending her title in the female category, while the male side made amends by smashing Nasir 4 1. Babkarsi watched both finals. Botrop Senior Secondary School's female team eventually eased past defending champions Gambia Senior Secondary School. In a marathon post-match penalty shootout which ended 9-8 after the game had ended in a one-all stalemate in regulation time. In the females final, Kadibayo fired Gambia high into the lead on the stroke of halftime with a well-taken free kick that wowed the spectators. The goal put her side on a comfortable footing heading into the dressing room knowing that they would need to step up their game in the second half if they wanted to maintain their lead. The second half proved to be the most interesting part of the game as Bothrop rectified their first half errors and mounted a spirited challenge, pressuring their opponents for the equalizer. The pressure paid dividends thanks to Fatu Sonko, who grabbed the much-needed and much-deserved equalizer for the West Coast girls. The contest could not be settled in normal time, and the central referee brought the game to an end and pointed to the spot for penalty kicks. After a marathon penalty shootout, Bothrop made it through when their goalkeeper saved the Gambia High's ninth spot kick, sparking wild jubilation among their players and fans. Head coach Fakir Basen shared his joy with us after winning. I am so excited. I don't even know where I am. This is why they are celebrating I cannot celebrate. Because this is, this has, this is something that I have been working for for four years. I could not have it within their three years. So today I have it. So I am so excited today. You lost to them last year. What have you worked on coming into this year's final? Um, yes, last year I lost to them and the year before last also I lost to them. The problem that was affecting me, those are the problems that I tried to rectify back home. Because it's not easy to win this competition. I have been working for this since September up to now. I have been play, playing a series of test games. And I know the areas that was my problem, those are the areas that I made sure. I go all out to find some of those players and bring them together so that they can have coordination then I prepare for this day. The other semi-final played at 5 p.m. between Nasir and Gambia High in the male category was a complete contrast as the contest rained goals. The Gambia High boys wiped away the tears of the female side by humiliating Nasir 4-1 with goals from Abdullah Balde who scored twice, Dauda Sankare and Kutubo Sanyang wrap up the scoring to inflict a heavy defeat on Nasir. The Basse boys never gave up and scored a consolation goal thanks to Alubalde. However, his goal never threatened the Banjul boys' dominant possession. 
For the money, the coach guiding the Nasir boys is not disappointed despite losing heavily, describing the final as historic for him and his boys. It is, it is not disappointing uh, for me. Uh, we made history because this is our first time playing this final. We have been coming here for the fourth time. Uh, now it is our first time playing the final. So I don't think it is a very big blow for us. Despite we have shown a very great display, the boys, they played very well. But it was just not on our side. So we have to take it with good feet. Uh, the four goals, uh, despite being four goals, but for me it's not disappointing because we made history. Nasir made history for Basse and for the school itself. For the Gambia High head coach Seku Sane, the work to defend the title starts now. We prepare very well because every champion should be prepared very well. We have to defend this trophy. Inshallah, we have to prepare very well. We are starting preparation still right now. Because we have discarded some players. We are, some of our players are leaving. We have two players, two key players who are leaving. So we have to start cutting things now, right now. And what's your words to your fans? Our uh, fans, we feel, we feel excited. We are thanking them. Since day one, they are following us. So we, we feel excited. Thank you everyone who supported us from day one. Both champions went home with a giant trophy and a cash prize of $75,000, while the runners-up got consolation prizes of $50,000 each. Other prizes awarded on the evening included the best goalkeeper, leading goal scorer, and best player. Babu Karsi, QTV News. Gambian pilgrims have performed Umrah in Maka. They also walked and ran between the hills of Safa and Marwa. Babukar Sise is in Maka and he now reports. At 4 a.m., all the pilgrims assembled outside Lualua Hatim Hotel, just 200 meters from Masjid Al Haram, the great mosque that surrounds the Kaaba. This was for a briefing, and pilgrims were advised to stay in one group while circumambulating the Kaaba. As they marched towards the Hajj and Umrah gate, it was already 6.30 a.m. The formation is in such a way that women are put in the center, surrounded by men, for protection. The monotonous rhythm of reciting religious verses is evident. Going around the cover seven times is called tawaf and is done in an anti-clockwise movement with a full circle completed every time a person is back at the black stone or parallel with it. After completing the tawaf, Pilgrims then moved to perform another Hajj ritual where they traversed between the hills of Safa and Marwa for seven times. Safa and Marwa commemorates the journey by Prophet Ibrahim's wife to find water for her infant prophet Ismail after they were left in the desert of Mecca at God's command. This is where the well Zamzam is located. It is a miraculously generated source of water from God which sprang when Ibrahim's infant son, Ismail, was thirsty and kept crying. After going and coming for seven times, a final prayer session is held at Marwa, marking the end of Umrah. Pilgrims will now wait until the 8th of Dhul-Hijjah, the last month of the Islamic calendar, and travel to Minna, the first day of Hajj. They will also visit Arafat and Muzdalifa to perform other Hajj rituals. Babukar Sister QTV News, Makatul Mukarrama. Before we end this bulletin of the news, let's take a quick look at our main stories. Another member of ex President Jamet's hit squad, The Junglers, gave evidence as the TRRC resumed sittings following a fortnight's break. The Justice Minister has moved quickly to clarify reports that three members of ex President Jamet's hit squad, commonly called The Junglers, have been released. Woven fabrics have been a part of most cultures in the Senegambia region. However, it seems the craft is in danger of dying as people turn to other, mainly imported fabrics. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Join us tomorrow for more news. Thank you for watching.